Hello, thank you for uh, making us a part of your day here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Going to have a conversation with uh, Mr. Mike Davis. He's head of neurology for UCB. That's a global biopharmaceutical company. He's joining us on the program to talk about this recent FDA approval for short-term nasal treatment for seizure clusters. Uh, Thanks for joining us here on the program, Mr. Mike Davis. Oh, well, thanks, Neil. Appreciate the invite. Now, you're, uh, you're head of the uh, biopharmaceutical company, UCB. Um, have you always been in the, uh, the pharmaceutical end of um, healthcare? Yes. Um, started my career probably post-91 and started on the, more of the science side and then moved into um, a little bit more of the pharmaceutical side in 96. Um, so, uh, yes, been in the pharmaceutical and science uh, drug development uh, side of the of the of the world since probably 92. Now, UCB has this drug for short term nasal treatment of seizure clusters. Are we talking all types of seizures or specific types of seizures? So we're, so first is we we acquired it from um, from Proxygen um, as one of our strategies that we have already have three uh, great patient solutions for for epilepsy for more chronic treatment of epilepsy. Um, and we realize when we when we look at our portfolio and being involved in epilepsy for over 22 years uh, that we didn't have um, we didn't have all the answers for for all the um, specific syndromes for challenges with epilepsy. And we're quite humble in our approach and realize that uh, we should continue to look out there for to address all patient needs uh, dealing with epilepsy. Um, so that was part of the strategy and the acquiring need of nasal M. And then regard, requiring or regarding the specificity regarding nasal M, it's really for one type of epilepsy, and that's really seizure clusters, um, or the, the other name is acute repetitive seizures. So that is uh, sort of an increase of seizures, but a more specific type of seizures over 24, 48 hours where they're clustering. So it's not your breakthrough seizure. It's not your seizure that may require a chronic AED or anti-epileptic drug but it's more for those moments where you have seizure clusters in between your chronic treatment and in between your either your your really your focal or partial onset seizures. Are you familiar with about how many people are dealing with that type of uh, epilepsy? Yes, so in the US it's about 150,000 people to about 200,000. It's in that so, range. It's a okay. yes. So this is it's considered kind of a rare, but uh, enough to where there's just a lot of research being done and, and this uh, particular type of uh, treatment for uh, that type of seizure cluster is uh, gaining more ground. What was the traditional uh, treatment or has there been another type of nasal treatment and this is just a, a, an improved type? No, it's, it's, kind, it's kind of mixed, uh, Neil. It's, if you think about it, seizure clusters technically probably doesn't have the awareness um, that overall chronic epilepsy, um, focal onset epilepsy has. Um, and if sometimes if you think about it in the range of, of uh, people, I think CPR treats about 200,000 a year and sort of the Heimlich. And if you think about th- those type of awareness, it's nowhere on the scale of that. Um, seizure clusters, uh, there's only one uh, solution on the marketplace right now, or maybe not even a solution, maybe better say it's treatment uh, for, uh, for seizure clusters, and that's a rectal gel. Um, there's been many companies trying to bring uh, a solution uh, to seizure clusters to the marketplace, but it's not a very easy um, disease or probably yet not just not a very easy product in the sense to manufacture and, and develop and bring to market. It's been a challenge. It's probably just been, I think it's probably been the least, if, I think there's probably better people out there, but I think for most companies, it's been about a nine to 12 year journey in trying to bring uh, a product like this to market. And it is, it is the first approved nasal option uh, or treatment for seizure clusters. Well, you mentioned the challenges, you know, that, that were faced during approval. Uh, your role in that approval, you know, there, there must have been something, you know, that stood out as a major challenge, either from the, the study side, some of the uh, results, how they might affect the patient and the physician, or from the physician's standpoint, being more familiar or trusting standard treatments as opposed to this uh, new treatment. Uh, Neil, that's a great question, and thank you for that. I would say the challenges really came with the with the development, first the development of of the product, right? Being able to formulate 
it's it's a challenge, right? There's um, there's been inter, um, intermuscular, I am nasal, a buccal, and that is one of the challenges. The other challenge is also on the development side. Uh, with 200,000 patients finding stuff, finding patients that are uh, recruited, and then the way of doing the study, either in office or in hospital or in home, um, the challenges of that are are quite uh, get quite complicated, right? You, the variables start adding up and it adds to complexity. So looking forward, what do you see, you know, as the future for this? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been approved. When do you think that it's going to be readily available? And is it going to be something that these hundred or so thousand patients can easily access? Great question. Um, we, we, we plan or we, we plan and hope that we'll launch NASLAM uh, this coming year, um, later in Q4. Um, there will be a gap. Um, there is a gap between the PDUFA the FDA approval and product availability um, as we purchase the company, as we purchase the product from another company, uh, we're in the process of uh, transferring ownership and also production timelines will dictate availability. Are there other uh, forms or, or types of epileptic uh, seizures and conditions that uh, your company, UCB, is also looking to, uh, to address? Well, we continue to want to develop our assets in in other areas of need. Uh, generalized seizures is one, and then uh, refractory epilepsy, um, highly drug refractory epilepsy, is another one. Uh, we have a, another product in the pipeline that is so, that are a few years from market that really focus on highly drug resistant epilepsy. Where can our listeners go online and get some more information about uh, Nasalam and about your company UCB as well? UCB.com. And you'll be able to find about our pipeline, but as well as our new um, approved asset uh, solution, Nasalam. Thanks for joining us here on the program, Mike. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Hoping that you'll uh, come back and uh, talk to us more once uh, availability is more wide, is widespread. Great. No, thanks. And appreciate the time. I look forward to speaking to you again. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button and support us if you can.